Hey, what's up everyone on YouTube? How you guys are doing? First off, I want to say thank you to everyone who does watch my videos. Um, I would appreciate if you guys could interact, like my videos, share, subscribe, you know, tell me what you think about the information that I do present. I would appreciate it, okay? Like, I don't mind constructive criticism, okay? However, um, I was overlooking the book of Daniel. So I'm going to focus a little bit on Daniel so that people can understand the way that I see this story that's written in the Bible and how, like, there's just certain clues that just stick out, okay? Like, um, especially when it claims how Daniel was, you know, Daniel was captive by the tribe of Judah. And here we are, like, we actually think that Christ comes from the tribe of Judah, but it's really the Antichrist. Like, and I don't care, like, what people might think of me. Like, the way that I see it is, is that you don't know if I'm telling the truth unless you see for yourself, okay? And just because I see something different from everyone else doesn't mean that I'm wrong, nor does it necessarily mean that I'm crazy. All right, because I'm sure with the information that I present, people might be like, damn, this chick's crazy. But I'm just like, I can't worry about that. I don't care. Because the thing that makes a person crazy, all right, to me, what crazy is, is people who go above and beyond to self-destruct now that's crazy um another form of crazy when we do the same thing over and over and over again that's crazy um another example of crazy is when you're in an unhealthy relationship that you know is not good for you and you continue to stay in it repeating the same cycle now that's crazy someone who sees something around a specific knowledge that's different from everyone else, now that's not crazy. Just because I see it differently doesn't make me wrong. It surely does not make me crazy. Okay? It don't. It just means that I see something different. And I believe that you know, people who acknowledge that will be the ones who want to be like, damn, I want to see what this chick got to say. You know, I don't know, maybe because that's the type of person I am. When I hear new information and new knowledge, I'm open to it. Regardless if it might be truth or false, I'm still open to it. Because I know how to discern, okay? So, um... I don't think I'm going to write anything right now. But um, I'm not done with extras yet. But the reason why I'm doing this is because of the video that I made yesterday. When I wrote, you know, the female Jesus and the male Jesus. And I said the male Jesus comes of Judah. But the female Jesus, the one that's hidden, the one that does not get any acknowledgement, she comes from the tribe of Dan. She was a slave to the tribe of Judah. Okay? So, I'm sure people are probably like, I think I might want a little bit, know a little bit more before they fully accept it. So, I'm going to go ahead and start reading from the book of Daniel. Now, remember, my Bible was created in 1813. It's different. Everyone else's. Some of what's written in here, yes, it's written similar to other texts. 
but there is information in this book that you really can't find in other books, all right? So um, just put that into consideration that my Bible is not based from today's Bible. It's not. I'm going to go ahead and start. And I'm going to start right here at the argument because I find it a little bit interesting. Daniel was very remarkable for his holiness. Now, I don't really want to call Daniel a he because of my assumptions of this truly being Christ. And the only reason why it's written this way. It's because Christ comes from the tribe of Dan, all right? And the reason why is because holiness has to do with the way that someone loves. And I'm not saying that men cannot love like a female. There are some that are out there, but it's very uh, a very small percent, okay? But um, let me just go and read. All right. His great zeal and the revelations he receives, the testimony given by him by God in the 14th and the 28th chapters of Exekiel. I got to read that book. He lived at Babylon 600 years before the coming of our Lord. I disbelieve that. And was there known as a prophet all the time of the captivity and beyond it. That is upwards of 70 years. So that he lived to a very advantaged age. This book is made up of histories and remarkable prophecies. We have here the history of several considerable events which happened at Babylon, both to the prophet Daniel and to the kings of the country, and several prophecies which describe the revolutions that were to happen in the kingdom of the world and particularly in the state of the Jews, as also the coming of the Messiah, okay? So when this states, okay, the coming of the Messiah, I don't take it as in their time. No, it's this time, because this is all about prophecy, okay? So when it states that, you know, Daniel existed before the, coming of the Lord I disbelieve that maybe if it's because it's on this timeline yes then it makes sense on the other end what people fail to acknowledge about the true Christ is the fact that she was a queen plus a prophetess okay so all these prophecies could they have come from different prophets? Or did they really come from Jesus Maria and they just hide in it and said that it came from a man? I'm just saying. Not saying that men cannot prophesy. Not saying that. You know, it's just I see what happened during that age a little bit different from everyone else. I do. All right, so let me go ahead and continue reading. Jeho Jehoiakim's captivity, okay? Now Jehoiakim was the king of Judah, all right? And this is his captivity, all right? So when I read this, all right, when I started reading this, I was like, this doesn't make sense. My ancestor, the real Jesus Maria, was not a slave master. She did not go around um, holding people against their wills 
as slaves. She did not do that. All right. So let me continue on. Ash, Penza, taketh Daniel. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah to instruct them. They, refusing the king's portion, do prosper with pulse and water. Now, I would like to understand what that means, pulse and water. I don't really know, so I don't want to build on that. That's something I would have to like really ponder on to find the understanding. All right, so I'm gonna continue on reading. In the third year of the regime of Jehoiakim, I don't know how you pronounce this word. It's spelled J-E-H-O-I-A-K-I-M. Jehoiakim, king of Judah. King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, on to Jerusalem and besieged it. All right. Now, there's something that I see here that I know a lot of people would not catch on to because they would consider King Jehoiakim, however you pronounce that name, as well as King Nebuchadnezzar as two separate individuals. But this is where misreading goes wrong. And this is how we fail to understand what the Bible is trying to interpret, all right? So I'm gonna read it again so you can see what I see. In the third year of the regime of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, onto Jerusalem and besieged it. So I see these two as one individual because of the way that it's written. King of Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar. Because you need to understand that names were consistently always changed. And there was a reason. You know, you change a name, you hide the identity of the character. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, King of Judah, into his hand were part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. All right? I think I want to write this. All right, hold on. Uh, no, I don't know if I want that. I would like to write it, but then I'm gonna have to keep looking back and forth. King of Judah into his hand were parts of the vessels of the house of God, okay? The house of God was never Judah. Do you catch on to it? So how can Christ, Jesus Christ, come of Judah. I don't want to even say Jesus Christ. Jesus Maria. Now, this is what I will do. Y'all see it? 
Jesus Maria and Jesus Christ, right? A lot of people also see it this way too. Jesus Christ as Julius Caesar. Jesus Maria would be Mary. Mary Magdalene, Queen, Mary of uh, Scots. Now a lot of people are gonna think that I'm fuck that I'm crazy when I say this. I can never spell Yahshua, but this is who Yahshua is. Okay. So please, because a lot of people think they're following the real God and they're following the real Jesus and they're really not. Now, I'm going to go back and read this part right here. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand the parts of the vessels of the house of God. All right. So if. How we spell this brother's name? I'm gonna put King. All right, because this would actually be this would be Jesus Christ. This would be Julius Caesar, but he was never a real king. That's the thing. That's what people don't understand. This brother right here killed to become a king because he was jealous. J-E-H-O-I-A-K-I-M K-I-M Now, he is the king of Judah. So you explain to me if this brother right here is the king of Judah, then how could the Jesus, this Jesus come of Judah? She comes of the tribe of Dan. Oh, and there's plenty of more names besides this for her, even for him, like Nicodemus. This is who it is, right here. This isn't Christ. This brother isn't Christ. People want to sit there and think that this brother killed himself because of what he did to um, Jesus. First off, Jesus Maria and this dude, they were lovers. She had his child. Before they killed it, they gave birth. After they killed it, they wanted to kill the baby. But the baby was given up for adoption into the hands of another family. And they fled to France. So you know that story about how Mary Magdalene fled to France after Christ died? That's bullcrap. She's the one who was put to death. It was the child that they were trying to kill. That they put to death. Why do you think there was a war in France? And then the war went from France all the way to Canada. Because that's where they traveled to. They fled from France, from France to Canada. From Canada, now they're over here in America. And look at what's happening to America. But nobody wants to hear me. That's not my problem. I could care less. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a right to believe what they want to believe. I'm going to sit here continuing to believe what I believe, teach what I teach, and pray to God that I'm saved. Okay? 
What you think just because I claim to be the descendant of Jesus Maria that I might be saved? No. I'll know when I'm saved. I know I'm protected. But I'm not 100% sure if I'm saved or not. I'm not fully saved. But I pray to be saved. And if not, then I'm not. But the point of this, right? That I, I know I spelled to you wrong. But I don't care if I did. But I think it's supposed to be like this. Something like that. So Yahweh. Would be. His God. Uriel. And the Elohim. Is her God. Okay, so let's get this information corrected because it really just irks my ears sometimes when I hear people speak the way that they do about God and about Yahweh and about Yahshua. And I'm just like, yo, y'all people are not really reading your Bible. And if you are, God is not yet has helped you to see. You know, you need to pray to God to help you to see. Because honestly, if you actually think that Jesus, the real Jesus, was a slave master? That's not true. And let me break this down to you to prove that Daniel was a woman. Parts, okay. And the Lord gave the king of Judah into his hand with parts of the vessels of the house of God. They were females. Because of the fact the real Jesus was a hermaphrodite, both woman and male in one body. And they were the true vessels of God. So therefore, this right here will prove that Jesus comes from the tribe of Dan, not the tribe of Judah. And let me find, I found one more part. Just hold on. Right here. Hold on. I got to know that um, I'm not good with Roman numerals. I haven't mastered that yet. And maybe it's because I really don't care to. Okay. Yeah, here I am. I'm thinking I'm in I'm, I'm at the book of Estras and I'm not. All right, this would be chapter five, Daniel. All right. Let me go ahead and erase this. I love that I got this. I've been wanting to get this for a few months now, but every time I go out, I always forget it. So I just ordered it online. I'm like, yes, finally. I got it. I love it. I love it. All right, so we are on Daniel. Chapter 5. All right, and it's going to start at, cha at verse 13. So... Chapter 5, verse 13. It states, Then 
was Daniel brought in before the king and the king spake and said unto Daniel art thou that Daniel which art of the children of the captivity of Judah whom the king my father brought out of Jewelry Jewelry And this is what I mean. Jesus is not a Jew. All right? Jew were meaning the Jews. Brought out of Jewelry. But I think it would be. Dan, I don't think it would be jewelry. I just don't believe. Hmm. Father brought out of jewelry. I'm wondering if it was Egypt, not jewelry. I do. Because of all the um, mistranslations in the Bible and changes that have occurred. Don't mind me. I'm just thinking outside of the box as I always do. All right. I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the God is in thee. And that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me. And they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not shew the interpretation of the thing so can we agree that Jesus did not come up with All right, because I tell you like this, right? Jesus was was put to death because they were innocent. They were persecuted. All right, they were beaten, etc., etc., etc. Where has anyone ever heard Jesus of being a slave master? Okay? What? Never. So please, and I understand it is confusing. And my mind just happens to have the ability to unravel through all that confusion and be able to put the pieces of the puzzles together. That's all that it is. Okay? Another factor about Jesus is the fact that Jesus, Maria, was a holy woman, period. If you think to be holy, has nothing to do with not having sex. Y'all need to think again. All right? Because what made Jesus Jesus is the fact that they were a seducer. And back in those times, when it came to Jesus' tribe, it was considered for them to be holy okay it's like how can I explain it like I don't want to really get too deep into it because then people are going to know how I do what I do alright 
And I don't like sharing everything that I know or what I do out in open public like that. I feel like it's just not worthy. Not everyone is worthy for certain types of knowledge because of the evil that people end up infecting it with, you know? And it just takes away from the purity. And we just have a bunch of human, demonic beings in this world who just likes to just tamper with anything that seems pure or of holiness, okay? So for those who do watch my YouTube videos, um, I once again, I appreciate this. And I hope that it registers to people. And I hope that people learn to find older books. You know what? It would be a blessing if someone bought me the most oldest Bible that's like $4,000. Like that would be like the most remarkable gift that anyone could ever give me. Don't give me a diamond ring. Give me a Bible that I really want. You know, I think it's the Guttenberg Bible that I want. Because that Guttenberg Bible was written before King James. And I really want to get my hands on that. Because I believe that there's information in there that you won't find in these Bibles that we read from right now. Ooh, I'm getting tired. And I got more thinking that I need to do because it's more work that I want to do, more reading that I need to do, but I need to piece it together slowly, you know, feed it to the people in small little baby steps because if I just give it all at once in one shot, people are not going to get it. I don't even know if they get it as it is. Nobody says nothing. I don't know if they're afraid to, you know, I don't know if I intimidate people. I don't want to intimidate no one. Yeah, I might know what I know, but please, I don't think that I know more than you. I mean, when it comes to God in this, I might know a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't mean that I know everything. I'm still learning. Even though I can teach I'm still learning, okay? Because before I was a teacher, I too was a student. And even though I am a teacher, I am always going to be a student because I'm always going to learn. My learning never stops, all right? So I'm gonna say goodnight. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm going to say goodnight, all right? Now, let me not act crazy. <laughs> all right, let me just stop. I'll say goodnight to everyone in the name of Jesus Maria. Amen.